Our first pick for current cinema releases is Ghost Stories, directed by Jerry Dyson and Andy Nyman and adapted from their well-received stage play first performed in 2010, Ghost Stories built its story around references to the brand of portmanteau horror films produced by British film production company Amicus Films during the 1960s and 1970s. Films such as Freddie Francis's Dr. Terror's House of Horrors, Peter Duffel's The House That Drew Blood and Roy Ward Baker's Asylum. Taking its approach to structure from those portmanteau films, Ghost Stories offers a trio of short stories of the supernatural that are linked by a bridging narrative featuring Andy Nyman himself as Professor Goodman, an academic obsessed with debunking allegedly paranormal phenomenon. Hello? Is there anyone there? The spirit. The spirit. The unquiet spirit. He accepts a quest to investigate three stories, one involving a night watchman, played by Paul Whitehouse, who experiences a terror linked to his unfortunate domestic life whilst guarding an abandoned asylum, a second story with hints of Jacques Deneur's Night of the Demon and focusing on a young man, played by Alex Lawther, who encounters a hideous pan-like creature during a nighttime drive through Woodland, and a third story in which a wealthy businessman, businessman played by Martin Freeman, finds his bubble of affluence shattered by a personal tragedy which is linked to a frightening encounter with a spectre. These three tales come together in a climax that brings the terror back home for Professor Goodman, in which subtle but haunting gestures are repeated in a manner which has significance in relation to a traumatic event in this character's past. There are a couple of missteps, including one scene which features the all too common vogue for supernatural entities that loom suddenly at the camera with gaping mouths, but for the most part, Ghost Stories works very well, offering a balance between chills and black comedy that feels like a throwback to a more comfortable era of British horror cinema. The film also builds a very imp impressive and localised sense of place compared with, comparable with British filmmaker Pete Walker's 1970s horror films. The story is taking place in recognisably English locales, decrepit coastal chalet parks, repressive suburban homes, desolate moors. It's a pleasing antidote to the repetitive cycle of American horror films that have inundated cinemas over the past couple of years. Wait, wait, I don't like it. Oh. <laughs> 